Gentlemen, this is Barry Norman on behalf of <coughs> CMS Trader, and welcome to our webinar on advanced Forex trading. Now, CMS Trader is a regulated provider, so I'm therefore required to give you a risk warning. Trading Forex, CFDs, and spread bets on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. You may lose more than your initial deposit it could be required to deposit additional funds. Please ensure you fully understand the risk and take care to manage your exposure. Now, tonight's class is sponsored by www.cmstrader.com. They are one of the world's leading Forex and CFD providers. And if you go to www.cmstrader.com and just click on the buy or the sell button, in about a second, you'll have a demo account open for you. There's no credit card required. And you can follow along with us tonight as we talk about leverage and spreads and everything else. Now, CMS also offers a very large education package. They'll make sure that every one of their traders is fully knowledgeable about the markets. They offer many different types of trading accounts, free daily signals, free daily market updates and technical analysis, and extremely fast execution of your trades. They offer a wide range of instruments, including Forex, CFDs for stocks, commodities, and indices. And they also offer their watch, copy, profit, their social trading, where you can just follow along of their, some of their best traders on the platform and duplicate their trades with just one click. You can also enroll in their education program where well, they'll help you learn how to become an independent trader. So tonight's class is being recorded, and you can see a copy of this class in about 24 hours by going to www.investing.com and go to the education tab and then locate webinars on demand. So let's get started talking about Forex trading. Forex trading can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. In the beginning, Forex trading seems like it's very simple. Too many traders, they come in, they say, ah, I know what the euro, US dollars do. I'm going to trade it to go up. I'm going to trade it to go down. So it seems like your only job as a trader is to pick what direction a currency pair is going to go and collect your profits. Ha ha. Doesn't work so well, does it? You'll eventually lose your investment. Or maybe you think you're trying to find a 100% accurate Forex trading system on the internet. If it were only so simple. So before we can talk about advanced trading, we need to understand that controlling risk is the most important concept that a trader can master. Risk control is more important than any strategy, any system, or any bit of knowledge. Speculating as a trader is not gambling. The difference between gambling and speculating is risk management. In other words, with speculating, you have some kind of control over your risk, whereas with gambling, you don't. Even a card game such as poker can be played with either a mindset of a gambler or with the mindset of a speculator, usually with totally different outcomes. In other words, if you ever watch those million-dollar poker games, and those poker, poker competitions on television, those players are so concentrated. They know every odd. They know every card that's been played. They know every odd, every, every bit of probability. They know every flitch of another trader. They know exactly how the bets are going to go. They know exactly how the cards are going to flow. They know every card that was played because what they're doing is they're constantly calculating risk. And when you're constantly calculating risk, you're no longer gambling. You are using your skill and your knowledge to become a speculator or an investor. Now, Forex risk management can be, make the difference between your survival or your sudden death with Forex trading. Risk management is a combination of multiple ideas to control your trading risks. It can be limiting the size, the lot size of your trade. It can be hedging, trading only during certain hours or certain days, or knowing when to take your losses. 
The first rule of risk management is to calculate the odds of your trade being successful. To do that, you need to grasp both fundamental and technical analysis. Now, the unfortunate part is too many traders don't understand how to calculate risk. They say, ah, oh, the euro US dollar is trading at 121.42, and I'm sure it's going to go up to 141.55. But if it moves against me, I'll close out my trade at 141.40, and I'll only lose a couple of dollars. Well, that's just pure guessing. Okay, because you haven't done any type of analysis to figure out what the market volatility is, what the odds are, what the possibility. You've not set your risk reward ratio to even decide if you can afford to make this trade. So you will need to understand the dynamics of the market in which you are trading and also know where the likely psychological price trigger points are, which are a price chart can help you decide. Once the decision is made to take a trade, then the next most important factor is how do you control or manage the risk? Remember, if you can measure the risk, you can, for the most part, manage it. So in stacking the odds in your favor, it's important to draw a line in the sand, which will be your cutout point if the market trades to that level. In other words, we call this a stop loss. It's where your trade will automatically close if the market falls or rises to a specific point. The difference between this cutout point and where you enter the market is your risk. So psychologically, you need to accept this risk upfront, even before you make the trade. If you can accept the potential loss and you're okay with it, then you can consider the trade further. If the loss will be too much for you to bear, then you must not take the trade. And too much to bear doesn't mean that you're gonna go crying in your suit. It means if it will take too much out of your portfolio, your capital stake. Because I can't tell you, if it's a $100 risk, don't take it, because you could have a million dollar portfolio. You have to decide your risk reward ratio. And we're gonna talk about that. So since risk is the opposite side of the coin of reward, you should draw a second line to SAM, which is where if the market trades to that point, you will move your original cutout or your stop loss to secure your position. This is known as sliding your stops. The second line is the price at which you break even if the market cuts you out at that point. Once you are protected by a break even stop, your risk can virtually be, has virtually been reduced to zero as long as the market is very liquid and you know your trade will be executed at that price. Make sure you understand the difference between stop orders, limit orders, and market orders. Now, understanding the different types of order execution in Forex is very important because too many traders trade at what we call market orders. That means they go on their website, they see that the Euro US dollar trading at 121.42 and they click on buy or they click on sell and the market will execute that order at that or the most appropriate price it can close it executed for. Well, that's a dumb way to trade. You also have what we call limit orders. Limit orders are orders that you set the limits for. You set a price in which you want to enter the market or a price you want to sell or a price at which you want to buy. And when that price is achieved, the system will automatically execute your trade. Doesn't that make a little bit more sense than just taking market orders? And there's a whole slew of all types of order entries. OCOs, one cancels the other. That means if you're not sure if an asset's gonna go up or down, or if a speech is going to send an asset up or down, you can set up two orders, one above and one below the price, and tell the system it's an OCO order. That means if the price moves up, it'll buy and cancel out your sell order. If the market falls down, it'll sell and cancel out your buy order. So understanding the type of orders is crucially important, but also understanding your risk per trade. Another aspect of risk to determine by how much trading capital you have available. 
Risk per trade should always be a small percentage of your total capital. A good starting point could be 2% of your available trading capital. That doesn't sound like much, does it? So for example, if you have $5,000 in your account, the maximum loss allowable should be no more than 2%. With these parameters, your maximum loss would be $100 per trade. That means that you have, your stop loss would have to be set within a loss of $100. Well, if that asset is fluctuating more than what that stop loss would have to be at, guess what? The market just told you you can't make that order and it stopped you from making a bad trade. A 2% loss per trade would mean that you could be wrong 50 times in a row before you wipe out your account. This is an unlikely scenario if you have a proper system for stacking the odds in your favor. Now, there are different types of betting systems. Okay, we have a well-known one called Martingale or anti-Martingale or speculative. Speculation comes the word from the Latin word speculari, meaning to spy out or look forward. Now, I don't believe in Martingale, but it's a very popular system. In a Martingale strategy, you would double up your bets each time you lose and hope that eventually the losing streak will end and you will make a favorable bet, thereby recovering all your losses and even making a small profit. Using an anti-Martingale strategy, you would have your bets each time you lose and would double your bets each time you won. This theory assumes that you can capitalize on a winning streak and profit accordingly. I firmly believe that the market's moving against you and you're seeing losses, that you should cut back your trading and eventually leave the market until you can start over fresh. Clearly, for online traders, this is the better of the two strategies to adopt. It is always less risky to take your losses quickly and add or increase your trade size when you are winning. However, no trade should be taken without first stacking the odds in your favor. And if this is not clearly possible, then no trade should be taken at all. Now, even though we've talked about the risk of $100 per trade, that's based on your capital. <coughs> but there's this funny little thing in Forex called leverage. Leverage allows you to magnify your trading position size using a small amount of your equity. Now, leverage magnifies your losses also. So your loss or risk per trade is set at what? It's based on your capital, not your leverage. Because the spot forex market is very leveraged market in that you could deposit or put down $1,000 and actually try tie up a trade of $100,000. This is a 100 to 1 leverage factor. A one pip loss in a 100 to 1 leverage situation is equal to $10. So if you had 10 mini lots in your trade and you lost 50 pips, your loss would be $500, not 50, far exceeding what your maximum loss could be based on the size of your capital. Because if you only had $1,000 in your account, the maximum loss you could take per trade would be $20. So one of the big benefits of trading the spot Forex market is the availability of high leverage. This high leverage is available because the market is so liquid that it's easy to cut out of a position quickly and therefore easier compared than most other markets to manage leverage positions leverage positions. Leverage, of course, cuts two ways. If you are leveraged and you make a profit, your returns are magnified very quickly. But in the converse, losses will erode your account just as quickly. Now, you need to understand why leverage is very important <clears throat> in the Forex market. When you trade the Forex market, you're trading one currency against another. And these currencies move in what's called pips or points. They are 
three decimal points to the right. Because currency doesn't move that much in a day of trading. Currencies are fairly stable. This is why governments can do business. And therefore, you need to have a lot of a position or a lot of a currency to make any money. Because if the euro is trading or quoted at 121.50, and the euro has a very big move today and moves from 121.50, that's 1.2150, and it moves to 122.50. That's a big move. That's a huge move in a day. But that's 100 points. And if you had only $1,000 in cash in the market, you would have made maybe $10. But with leverage, because you're using 100 to 1 leverage, you would have made $1,000. So it's very important that you understand and you have the access to leverage. But your losses are exactly the opposite of your profit. So by ramping up using leverage, your profit could be $1,000, but your loss or your exposure would, could also be $1,000. And this is one of the reasons that to be a Forex trader, you need to build yourself a trading plan. Not a system, not a strategy. A trading plan talks about your financial goals, how you're going to understand the market, what your risk is going to be, how much you, of your capital you invest. And then you want to master risk or master more risk than strategy. And I, you keep harp, hearing me harp on this, but strategies are fairly easy. There's many, many, many ones out there. There's all kinds of complicated, absurd things out there. But the fact is, deciding whether assets can go up or down isn't all that difficult. Okay. It's understanding, can you afford to make the trade, where you should get out of that trade, where you should enter that trade, what the risk would be for that trade. So risk is inherent in every trade you take. But as long as you can measure your risk, you can manage it. Just don't overlook the fact that risk can be magnified by using too, too much leverage in respect to your trading capital, as well as being magnified by the lack of liquidity in the market. With a disciplined approach and good trading habits, taking on some risk is only the only way to generate good rewards. Traders can strategize all they want to come up with a great trading plan. But if they can't execute that plan effectively, all their hard work might be thrown out the window. A trader has many tools at his disposal in, in order to trade the strategy of their choosing. These tools come in the way of different orders that allow a trader to enter and exit the market at their convenience. So most brokers, and I mentioned to you earlier, offer market orders, limit orders, take profit orders, stop loss orders, trailing stop loss orders, OCO, one cancel the other, okay. parent and contingent orders, limit orders. Your trading style will dictate the order type that best suits your needs. Orders should be placed according to how you are going to trade. This is how you intend to enter and exit the market. Improper order placement can, screw, 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 sorry, can skew your entry and exit points. So let's talk about these types of orders that Forex traders have. When you understand order entries, you can start to use them in your trading. For instance, when a large market event is scheduled, and you are not sure what it will do to a currency pair, you have order entry types that you can use that will execute a trade at the market rallies or falls, and you can set up both and give the right order entry, and it will cancel the one in the wrong direction and execute the one in the right direction. Market orders. This order type is often the first execution order that a trader comes across as the biggest mistake you can make. Like I said, these are ones where you just click the buy button or the sell button. This is an order that's executed at the market and is immediate. This means that you want to enter or exit this market instantly. 
you can use the market order to trade at the next available price. However, you might want to note that it's a fast moving market where prices can change in seconds. The price can alter substantially between the time the order is placed and the time it's completed or filled. This fellow traders is called slippage. As an example, let's imagine the Euro US dollar is currently trading at an asking price of 121.21 and has a bid of 121.20. If you wanted instant access to the market, then you'd have a choice to either buy at 121.21 or selling at 121.20. To, to exit a position, on the other hand, you would have assuming that you're long or sell the position back to the market. Because in Forex, you execute one order in one direction to enter the market and you enter the opposite order to exit the market. To cover a short, nevertheless, you simply reverse and buy back the position. The difference between the bid and the ask price is a very important concept you must understand, and this is called the spread. The best way I can explain the spread to you is if you've ever been on vacation and you needed to convert your pounds for euros or your euros for pounds, and you went to the commission store, the currency store, and went to the bank, they'd offer you a price at which they buy your euros or sell you the euros. In the old days, this used to be a commission and they'd buy it and sell it at one price. Today, there's a buy price and a sell price. In essence, it's the broker's fee or commission because this is how the broker makes his profit and covers his expenses. He sells you at one price or buys, from, buys it for you at another price. But these are done in pips. They're very, very small amounts. Okay. The average currency pair ranges from five to 10 pips. The more major pairs sometimes trade at a three pip spread. This is three cents basically on a thousand dollars. But you have to be aware of the difference. Now, when you're setting your orders, you have to set them above or below the bid or the ask price because you can't. Now, you can execute, say, the euro is trading at 121.20 right now. And you don't want to enter the market at 121.20. You can tell it to buy the euro when it hits 121 even. And when it hits 121, it will buy the euro for you. If you want to sell the euro, but you think the euro is going to go up higher first, you say, okay, I don't want to sell at 121.20. I want to sell at what is it, 121.50, because I want to sell high and buy low. So a limit order is an instruction to buy the currency pair at the market price once the market reaches your specified price or lower. The price must be lower than the current market price. A limit sell order is an instruction to sell the currency pair at the market price once the market reaches your specified price. So limit orders are commonly used to enter a market when you fade breakouts. But a limit order is the most popular type of order. For those who don't understand and those beginners and you're constantly placing market orders, you're actually risking too much money because you should have a strategic point. If you think the euro is going to move up because you're looking at a strategy and you're waiting for it to, to break a certain price level or you're waiting for it to hit a trend line or bounce above a support level, you need to know what that price is and enter the market after that decision has been confirmed not just pushing a button saying execute it when I want. So, for example, suppose that based on your analysis of the market, you think the, the Swiss franc current rally move is unlikely to break past a resistance successfully. Therefore, you think that it would be a good opportunity to short when the euro, when the US dollar Swiss franc rally up near that resistance level. To take advantage of this theory, you can place a limit sell order a few pips below that resistance level so that your short order will be filled when the market moves up to that specified price. So as you can see, as we talk about these, understanding order entry and risk is more important than any type of trading strategy because the trading strategy is easy. No, because having the proper order entry 
allows you to take advantage of market moves. Besides using limit order to go short near a resistance, you can use the order to go long near a support level. For instance, if you think the probability that the Swiss franc's current decline will pause and reverse near a specific or particular support level, you may want to take the opportunity to go long when the Swiss franc declines to a level near that support. In this case, you can place a limit buy order a few pips above that support level so that your long order will be filled when the market moves down to that price you specified a lower. So before placing your trade, you should already have an idea where you want to take profit should the trade go your way. A limit order allows you to exit the market at also a preset profit objective. If you're long a currency and you use the limit sell order to place your profit objective, if you go short, a limit buy order. So you could set your take profit targets. So you don't need the euro US dollar to rally from 121.50 to 122.50 because it's, it's very unlikely it's gonna happen. But if you set your reasonable profit point and say, I'm gonna take it when it hits 121.85, the minute it hits 121.85, it closes out your position, takes your profit, puts the money in your account. So using a buy stop order and a stop loss order and a, or one cancels the other are very easy ways to take profits. Now stop order, is the way that you can control your risk or your loss. A stop order is an order that becomes a market order only once a specified price is reached. It can be used to enter a new position or to exit an existing one. A buy stop order is an instruction to buy a currency pair at the market price once the market reaches your specified price or higher. That price that buy price needs to be higher than the current market price. A sell stop order is an instruction to sell the currency pair at the market price once the market reaches your specified order. So if you had said, okay, I'm going to buy and use a limit order to buy the euro 121.50, I'm going to take my take profit point at 121.85, but my risk reward ratio says I must get out of this market if it falls below 121.25, you can place a stop loss order at 121.25, and if the market falls down to that level, it will automatically close out your position. Stop orders are commonly used to enter a market when you trade breakouts. For example, suppose the Swiss franc is rallying towards a resistance level, and based on your analysis, you think it'll break above that resistance level. It will continue to move higher. To trade this opinion, you can place a stop buy order a few pips above the resistance level so that you're, you can trade the potential upside breakout. If the price re later reaches or surpasses your specified price, this will open your long position. An entry stop order can also be used if you want to trade a downside breakout. Place a stop order a few pips below the support level. Stop orders are used to limit your losses. Everyone has losses from time to time, but what really affects the bottom line is the size of your losses and how you manage them. Before you even tr enter a trade, you should already have an idea where you want to exit your position should the market turn against you. One of the most effective ways of limiting your losses is through a predetermined stop order which is commonly referred to as a stop loss. If you have a long position, say with the Swiss franc, and you want a pair to rise in value, in order to avoid the possibility of chalking up uncontrolled losses, you can place a stop sell order at a certain price so that your position will automatically be closed when your price is reached. A short position will have a buy stop order instead. Then we have something called trailing stops. Trailing stops are similar to stop losses. A trailing stop can be used to restrict losses and avoid margin closeouts. A trailing stop loss resembles a stop loss in that it automatically closes the trade if it moves in an unfavorable direction. The key feature of a trailing stop loss 
is that as long as the market price moves in a favorable direction, the trigger price automatically follows the market price at a specified distance. So in other words, you're trading the euro at 121.50. You have your stop loss at 121.25, and you have your take profit point at 121.85. The market starts moving in your favor from 121.50 to 121.60 to 121.65 to 120. Well, what's happening is you've, you've set your stop loss at 25 points. Well, as the market moves up, As the market moves up, your, your trailing stop loss would continue moving in that same difference of 25 points. So when the market hits 121.65, your trailing stop loss has moved to 121.40. So if the market falls against you, you only lose out 10 points. Once you've reached your profit objective, say, or once it gets up to 121.50, because the market's reached 121.75, you now are guaranteed that you will either break even or be in profit. So the key feature of trailing stop loss is that as long as the market price moves in favor of direction, the price trigger automatically follows the market price. This allows your trade to gain value while reducing the amount of loss that you are at risk. So in other words, if I entered the euro at 121.50, what I do is the minute it goes above 121.75, I'll move my stop loss to 121.50 or I have a trail and I'll sell half my position, lock in my profit, take half of my profit. And that way, even if the market falls back to 121.50, my trade gets closed out. I get closed out at a break even, but I've already sold half of my lot. So I already have profit. So there's many ways that you can turn the markets into profit without complicated strategies. Stop orders can be used to protect profits. Once your trade becomes profitable, you may shift your stop loss order into a profitable direction so as to protect some of your profit. For a long position that has become very profitable, you may move your stop sell order from the loss to a profit zone to safeguard against any chance of really a loss in case the, your trade does not reach your specified profit objective and the market turns against you. Similarly, for a short position that has come very favorable, you may use your stop buy order for, to protect from losses. So order, once again, order entry is some of the most important parts of understanding the Forex market. Entry orders are those to enter the market at a specified price. It, it's almost impossible to monitor the market every second. And this is why an entry order can be handy. If you feel the market may make take a certain action, such as break through a price that has been touching but hasn't yet been able to break, you would want to use an entry limit order. When the price crosses your entry limit order, you're in the market. But if it doesn't, your trade doesn't get executed. And you can take advantage of these. We can also talk, take things one step farther by setting contingency stops and limit orders to manage our trade if our order entry order is triggered while away. This gives us peace of mind that while we're floating a naked trade without managing orders attached to it. To do this, click the advanced button while placing an order entry. This option for setting a stop and limit order will be added. But then we have things like good to cancel. For instance, say you want to trade Bitcoin. Bitcoin's fallen all the way down to $10,000, $11,000. You, you say, I will buy Bitcoin whenever it rallies above $12,000. Or maybe you only want to buy Bitcoin when it's $9,000. You can put a permanent buy order to buy Bitcoin whenever it hits $9,000. And it'll just stay there until it ever happens. Okay, If it happens for one second and one freaky day, you got in the market at a good price. You can also set up good for the day. Say you think the euro is going to sometime during the day fall to 121 even or, 
or below 121. You so you're you would be happy to buy the euro whenever it hits 121. So you set up the day, your order for the day, and if it hits that price during the day, it'll execute your order. Doesn't touch that price, it closes out your order, it never happens. So remember, a GTC order, good to cancel, order remains active in the market until you decide to cancel it. Your broker will not cancel the order at any time. Therefore, it is your responsibility to remember that you have the order scheduled. A GFD, good for the end, of, good for the day, order remains active through the market until the end of the trading day. Because foreign exchange is traded 24 hours a day, this usually means 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. There's also a lot of unusual Forex orders. So can I order a grande extra hot soy with extra foam, extra hot spit quad shot with a half squirt of sugar-free white chocolate and a half squirt of sugar-free cinnamon? This is what you hear when you're standing in that line at Starbucks and want to shoot the person in front of you. But in the Forex market, you can pick and choose any type of order you want and get it to execute your trade for you. So we have one cancels the other. We have one triggers the other. Okay, One triggers the other is a great one. Okay, For example, the Swiss franc is currently trading at, say, 120. Do you believe that once it hits 121, it will reverse and head downwards, but only up to 119? In order to catch the move while you're away, you set a sell order at 120, and at the same time, you place a related buy order at 119. And you'll get both of those orders in it, one will trigger the other. When one happens, the other happens. So you'll get to trade off that resistance level and off of that support level. And you get both trades in. Now, there's also some very simple trading strategies. Hedging is a way to reduce risk by taking both sides of a trade. Hedging is not very complicated. You make small amounts of profit by taking small trades on either side. Advanced traders sometimes use two different pairs to make one hedge, but can get very complicated. But it's a great way to trade in the markets. For example, you say you decided that you want to go short at the Swiss franc because you see it hitting the top of a recent price range. You decide to initiate your short. After setting up your short, you start thinking that the Swiss franc is looking a little bit strong, and you think that it might break up upward. And so you make a sh your short, Make your short an expensive one. So to do some advanced balancing act, you start looking at other U.S. dollar pairs to find that the euro U.S. dollar tends to move inversely to the U.S. dollar Swiss franc. To com complete your hedge, you go short on a euro U.S. dollar, and the U.S. dollar ends up breaking the resistance level and moves strongly against the Swiss franc. But your euro trade becomes a winner, and your euro Swiss franc trade be is a loser. Because there's correlation, you're trading the dollar on both sides, but usually the euro and the Swiss franc move in opposite directions. Then you have position trading. Position trading is trading based on your overall exposure to a currency pair. Your position is your average price for the currency pair. For example, you might make a short trade on the euro US dollar at 140. If the pair is ultimately t trending lower, but happens to retrace up, you take another short at, say, 142. Your average position is 141. Once the euro drops back below 141, you'll be back in overall profit. So there's many different ways and options open to you. A Forex option is an agreement to purchase a currency pair of predetermined price at a specified time. You can purchase an option for the overnight hours for Forex trading. You can also try scalping. Scalping is a way of making very short-term trades for a few pips using high leverage. Scalping typically is best done in conjunction with news releads and supportive technical conditions. The trade can last anywhere from a few seconds to a few hours. Many beginning Forex traders start with scalping, but it does not take long to figure out how much you can lose if you don't have an idea of how what you're doing. In general, scalping is a risky strategy that does not pay well in comparison to its risk. If you're going to make scalping trades, it's best to do so in with conjunction with your overall trading position, not as your primary trading method. 
But once you've learned how to do scalping properly, it's a lot of work because you make a lot of little trades, but you can turn it into a very profitable way of trading Forex. Advanced Forex trading is about seeing all of your options when you make a trade. Aside from using masterful risk management and extreme caution, advanced trading can be used as an alternative way to make position profits and control losses. Advanced trading techniques are just about using the market's behavior to your advantage and learning to use advanced forex techniques proper, properly is what will give you the edge when you, you want to stand apart from the average trader. So hopefully we've given you some heads up about a little bit more advanced forex trading and some ideas that you might want to use. Thank you very much for joining us tonight. This class has been recorded and you can access a recording of this class in about 24 hours on investing.com. Have a great day and bye now.